Hey everybody, welcome back to Score Center, the weekly show where we go through my AFL tips, my super coach, we count down the highest selling sports cards on eBay, we check out how the common metal is going, we of course open up packs, because it wouldn't be scorecard collectibles without opening up some packs, but we also look at my favorite pull of the week, um, usually we look at the highlights, but you will we'll see later on why we don't have any highlight this week. So let's just jump straight in to my AFL tipping. Okay, let's quickly look at my tips from round five. We did get six right, which is not uh, great. Uh, we did uh, fall on the Giants beating the Swans, which I think most people would have went to the Swans there. Um, and I did take that punt on Carlton beating Port at the G. Um, of course, Port were too strong. And uh, Fremantle getting over the Crows at home were the uh, where we went wrong last week. Let's go to round six and see what's coming up. Uh, Friday night, we've got the Giants v the Bulldogs. Can't go against the Bulldogs. And mm, tip uh, margin might... Let's go for 27 points. Then we've got Geelong, West Coast. Hmm. I mean, it is home. But Brisbane did... Well, they almost beat them at home. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it should be Geelong, but... Hmm. We might come back to that. Uh, Swans over Gold Coast. You would think the Brisbane, but mm, yeah, I don't know. That's should I? Uh, well, mm, well that would be a good game, Richmond Melbourne. Uh, hard to go against Richmond, although Melbourne have been fantastic. So, hmm, I don't know. That would be a really good game. Well, that's an easy one to do. Hawks Adelaide. In Tasmania, hmm. um, Anzac Day is always a really big day, and I feel like regardless of how either team is going, Anzac Day just sort of feels like a fresh start. It just sort of it's got a, a unique vibe to it, unlike any other game. Um, and I can see the pies getting up. Um, Port at home, very hard to, to beat them. Got a few ones that I'm a little bit not sure about. I am going to uh, go for the Eagles. I think uh, they've got enough great players um, that they, I think, are capable of uh, beating Geelong at home. Uh, Carlton Brisbane. I kind of want to go for Carlton again, but hmm. Hawthorne Crows, I mean Hawthorne, mm. I mean either team could win and it wouldn't be a huge surprise. This, oh, that Marvel, oh man, I'm a bit torn, should we go for like what's obvious or should we, mm. let's go Brisbane. Let's go Crows. Maybe. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I feel good about that. Let's go for Carlton. Let's just do it. It's at Marvel. Oh, but can I see them winning at Marvel? There you go. Bulldogs, Eagles, Swans, Carlton, Richmond, Fremantle, Adelaide, Collingwood, Port. I'm either going to have a really great round or I'm going to have a really bad round. So I've gone in and changed my tip to Brisbane. Uh, kept everything else the same, um, but yeah, I thought I could not risk it um, with you know going for West Coast um, and Adelaide. I felt like I probably need something a little bit more concrete. So there you go. Literally wrote in team coach, not super coach. Okay, so in round five, we got 2,124 points, which puts us in the top 24%. Not a great round, but not a terrible round. 
Okay, so Jeremy Howe only scored 16. Um, he's going to be out for at least three or four weeks, so we're going to have to do something with him. Tom Stewart had a great game, and he's like averaging 109, which is awesome. Um, Zebul is also going really well. I'm really happy with the way he's performing for his price. But we're going to have to get How out. I mean, it's tempting to go for Alex Witherden because he is slightly cheaper. Um, so, but he's obviously only had one game and he had a blinder of a first game. But, you know, that's not an indicator that they're going to score like that. Um, every game. I am tossing up between Daniel Rich and I was thinking Brody Smith, but then Lockie Scholl is a little bit cheaper. He has gone up quite a lot. Daniel Rich is only in 2.4% of teams. Look, let's go for Daniel Rich because he's in hardly any teams. It's a little bit more, but there you go. Uh, yep, confirm. I'm just happy to leave Sloan on the bench for now again. Now, before we jump into this week's eBay uh, top 10, let's uh, put the team coach to the side, but let's just, uh, as a bit of a surprise, let's just go through these. Uh, I've got three packs of footy stars. Let's see if we can pull something that can rival, rival what's on this week's list. Now, what do we got? We've got... I feel like I haven't opened up uh, Footy Stars for a while. Um, they feel, they definitely feel different. Oh, I've got Irving Mosquito, who I think is, he's he's uh, got an injury at the moment. I can't remember what it is, but I think he's out for at least a few weeks. Very unfortunate for him, but it's a very, very cool. Um, Hollow Foil, David, remember that name. Uh, and then we get a, a camo, Nick Vlosten. I think we've got the fire version from the starter packs, but that is very, very cool. And I think, I think Nick's out with an injury as well. So that's sort of the, the injury duo, <laughs> unfortunately. So let's hope, what are we gonna, are we gonna get like a, 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 a Pal and Rory Laird or, I don't know, it's, who are we gonna get? I've got Oscar Allen, definitely not injured, uh, which very, very important um, in the, uh, the the massive uh, defeat of Collingwood, very sadly. Um, but Oscar Allen did very, very well. And so we've picked up his uh, hollow foil. And then we've got Charlie Cameron uh, from the Lions, who I think might be injured as well. So there you go. We've, uh, at least Oscar Allen is, <laughs> is still doing well. <laughs> yeah, final packet, final packet. Is it just me or is there a lot of injuries this year? Maybe it's the coming off such a, a weird year and now they're playing full quarters and it's, I don't know. Oh, look at that. Wow. So there you go. Of course, Hal is out um, for, for at least a, a few weeks now. Oh, that very happy to get, but yeah, these are all. Oh! <laughs> I did not expect that. Oh wow! <gasps> We've got a bang. Who? Oh my goodness! Goodness gracious me! I did. Wow. There you go. I think he is he injured as well. I think he might be. 144. Wow, 144. Let's uh, pop him in the, the top, on the top loader. I've got my penny sleeves here. I can't actually find my top loaders at the moment. So uh, let's pop him in the penny sleeve. Oh, who would have, oh my goodness. Well, look, that, let's just go through the rest of the, the base. Um, but, oh my goodness. So, um, Let's, I don't think, I don't think the Took Miller uh, bang card will be in this week's top 10, but who knows? Let's now check out the eBay rundown of what has been selling this week in Australian sports cards. 
Let's kick this week's eBay segment off with this 1996 Select AFL Hall of Fame collection. Of course, absolutely massive players. Got Lee Matthews, John Coleman, Ron Barassi, Jack Dyer, um, all sorts, Graham Farmer, um, of course, uh, Ted Whitten, Bob Skelton, Gordon Coventry. Just absolute massive, massive legends. Really, really cool set. Uh, so that sold for 550 then we had this Shea Bolton marquee go for $5.99. Of course, we haven't picked up a marquee card yet. That would be absolutely awesome. Uh, then we had this uh, 2011 AFL Heritage John Kennedy uh, signature, John Kennedy Senior, uh, which did get... So these were released in 2011, um, but select very recently repackaged them. So they came out as a set of, I think they were a set of 100 and they were selling them for about 2000 um, and they didn't sell a lot. And so what they've done is they've, they repackaged um, the signatures so that they sold them. Um, so you would get in the box, you would get one auto and one action card. Um, and so they went out for sale about a week or so ago. And so, um, we have this John Kennedy Senior uh, up for sale, and that went for seven hundred and ten dollars. Um, then we had this. This is a really cool set of nineteen sixty-five Scanlan's cricket cards. It's a full set of forty um, that sold for how much was that? That was seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars. But there you go. That is. Um, that's a very, very awesome set of cricket cards. Uh, then we had these uh, Team Coach Wild Cards, Star Wilds from 2005. This is a complete set. Um, so you have um, Andrew McLeod, Jason Akamanis, Fev, Chris Tarrant, uh, Matty Lloyd, as a Ben Crawford, Daniel Wells, uh, Pav, we've got Jeff White, Chad Corns, Richo, where, who else do we got? We've got uh, Fraser Garrick, uh, Big Bad Bustle and Barry Hall, but Chris Judd and Adam Cooney. So there's quite a few Brownlow winners there. Um, those designs are very, very cool. They're very reminiscent of sort of 70s and 80s um, style graphics um, that sort of design um, which is very, very cool. So that whole set sold for $800. Um, then, uh, so uh, this sold for $850. Thank you to the person who um, pointed out how to f actually work out um, how much these um, best offer accepted actually sold for. Because um, we've been seeing a lot of these and I've been saying look I don't know how much it went for and somebody posted a link to a video that explains how to find out unfortunately YouTube um, deleted their comment um, YouTube is quite um, happy to delete anything that has a link in it um, so sometimes legitimate comments get deleted so I unfortunately didn't have a chance to thank the commenter who uh, pointed it out but if you uh, go to page sources so if you want to um, find out how much something sold for um, you just need to go to find a page source and then we just need to type in tax exclusive so if you look for tax exclusive price it will actually tell you how much it went for so they were looking for 9.99 but it sold for 850 so that's um, going forward that's how we will know how much things sold for um, if it's got the the price uh, crossed out so that was uh, 850 so that's a whole set of 1980 Scanlon's rugby league cards the full set of 168 cards so no doubt uh, that set bringing back a lot of memories for people that were collecting uh, footy cards back in the 80s then we had the Scott Pendles um, gold card craft sell for 950 how amazing would that be to get i would absolutely love that um then we had nick nat uh gold craft card just edging pendles out for a grand 
Um, and then we also had this Tom Mitchell gold. So this is this is what you get when you um, redeem your four card craft cards. Uh, you get this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous 24 karat gold plated card. Um, that's the back. That, that looks so good. And then we started seeing these um, being shipped out. I think it was Monday morning that people started getting them. Um, if you're not following them, the Card Authority is a really great um, podcast. And they um, their, their shop, RGV Collectibles, you know, they will often post videos when they, as soon as they get stuff, um, which is really, really exciting. I'm sure a lot of you already follow them. Um, but if not, definitely check them out because if you're really into your cards, um, particularly AFL cards, um, Card Authority is a really great podcast. So there you go. That's the uh, 24 karat gold plated card craft prize card uh, selling for a thousand. I think it was a thousand. Pretty sure um, that's what it went for. Then, so this sold for what? This sold for a thousand and ninety. Uh, from memory but it's a complete series one and two so there, there was two series in 1995 of these arl rugby league cards and this is the uh set the full set love the uh the cane toad that looks like wally lewis is the phantom that's very very cool of course lots of mel meninga um yeah just classic 90s rugby league but yeah there you go and there was a really cool these are very very 90s these sorts of um force five inserts but yeah very sort of foil and yeah but just it looks so 90s and then so second second highest australian sports card that sold this week was this reg gaznia scanlon's card from 1964 and it sold for 1450 dollars and yeah so it seems like people are, are really really getting into their scanlon's history of course that logo that iconic scanlon's logo um but yeah that is a pretty awesome piece of australian um card history um obviously if you're not a follower of rugby league um you might not uh, be aware how absolutely incredible reg gaznia was but he uh, was absolute or well, is an absolute uh, legend of the game forever and then speaking of legends forever our number one highest selling card was this 1998 select cricket uh donald bradman auto look at that now i know uh, brad signed a lot of things in his time um but this is a uh limited to 50 cards um i'm not sure how many select cards uh, bradman signed um I'm sure um, one of our big cricket heads will be able to tell us in the comments. Uh, but that is a really, really awesome card. And of course, so that was signed in 1998 um, and he died only a few years after that. So that is a pretty special card, numbered 47 of 50. Really, really beautiful piece of Australian sporting history memorabilia. So right now is when we would normally be opening up the highlight cards from Select, but this week we don't have any because according to their Facebook page, they did have a quality issue with both of the, the highlight and the NAB Rising Star cards. So they have been rejected and will be reprinted. So no highlights this week. So let's check in with Common Metal and see how the leading goal kickers in the AFL are going. And Tex is still in the lead with 22 goals. He only added two against Fremantle, but uh, still well in the lead on 22. We then have two players on 17. We have Jack Rewalt and Josh Bruce. Uh, Jack kicking five against St Kilda. Uh, then we have two players uh, jointly on 16. We have Harry Mackay and Kale Hooker. Kale Hooker kicking four against Brisbane. Um, and Harry only adding one um, against the loss to Port Adelaide. Um, 
West Coast, uh, we had Jack Darling kick five against Collingwood and Oscar Allen also um, booting five against the Pies. Uh, so Jack Darling's now on 15 for the year and Oscar on 14. For the players that we have, the uh, Coleman predictors for the best is Eric Hipwood, uh, currently on 11th. He added two, uh, no he didn't, he added three goals against Essendon and Tom Hawkins is on 10, uh, he added one against the Roos. So my favourite pull of the week was this gold captain's card for Brianna Davey, um, which was very exciting to pull. And then of course I have to uh, now include this uh, to Camilla bang that we uh, just pulled earlier in the video. Um, did not expect that. Now, can we add two those? We do have four packets of Team Coach. Uh, let me pop those, I might put those off camera or else the focus is going to be a bit of an issue, but can we pull something even bigger for, um, for uh, our, our um, what am I even trying to say? We've got Sam Sational, Sam Walsh, and a Ben Cunnington Superstar Powers. Uh, for the segment is the word I'm looking for. Uh, can we add to our favorite pulls of the week by pulling something even bigger than the bang uh, card, which, I, you know, as I've said before, um, Score Center has been very, very lucky. Uh, we've got a St Kilda 3D icon and we've got a Shane McAdam gold card. Um, we've been very lucky. We've had some nice pulls um, just randomly. Um, you know, normally, so there's always heaps of card opening videos on the channel, but you know, these are just like a little extra to the score center fun. Um, but not expecting, oh, I got a little bit excited there. Very nice card, but yes, not, not the, uh, the super rare, uh, card crafts, but a very nice Rory Sloan. Um, and he did have, um, Eye surgery, Jack Z. Well, both so both both of those players in my super coach, as you uh, would have seen at the start of the episode. Um, but yeah, here we go. Final packet that went so quickly. Final packet for just this little fun opening. Who have we got? What have we got? Well, I'm doing such a terrible job at opening cards. Oh, we've got oh, we've got one of these. We've got Ben Cunnington. Where, where am I putting that? What are we doing? Buddy, Shane McAdam, which we uh, just got. And there you go, we've got a Robo Rory, uh, Rory Laird, and uh, Jacob Hopper, future star power for our little fun pack opening on Score Center. So let's now talk about the Select Collector Club. Select announced this late last week and on Monday the application process ended. Now I applied to become a member and like many others I uh, received the email on Wednesday yesterday to say that I'd been welcomed into the club which is very exciting. Now let's talk about what the Collector Club is. Basically, its main function is to ensure that you have the option of buying at least one box of Select's releases for the next year. Now that includes Footy Stars Prestige, um, the Series 2 release, so last year's Series 2 was Dominance. We won't be getting Dominance this year, we'll be getting something different, um, which Select haven't announced yet, but we will be getting a series two, at least a at least one series two product, um, and premium releases. Now, Select haven't officially announced uh, Supremacy, but it's uh, highly expected that they will release Supremacy um, again this year, and they might release something similar to Brilliance. We don't know, um, but they do say any premium releases. Basically, what they'll do is they'll put aside one box for each member of the collectors club so that you can go and buy that without the anxiety of it selling out within a few minutes 
So if you're somebody who likes to buy the select premium releases, the series two releases, but get really freaked out, like constantly refreshing, your palms are sweaty, you're thinking, oh, is this, am I gonna get a box? Can I get a box? It just completely does away with all of that. So now if you don't buy select premium products, then obviously this collector's club is not for you. It was $99 to join. Is it worth the money? For me, I'm happy to pay that amount if Select only release Prestige, Series 2, and a premium release. Um, that basically means that I'm paying a $33 premium to ensure that I have absolutely that product without paying ridiculous prices on eBay, which I, 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 I wouldn't. I, you know, I wouldn't buy a box for a 50% or higher markup. But I'm happy to pay a little bit extra to ensure that I've got a box put aside for me. Another aspect of the reason why I signed up is, and I think a lot of other people um, had similar feelings that they're basically FOMO, fear of missing out. You know, I got the email, I saw the word select, I saw the words window will be closed at 5 p.m. on, on Monday. You know, there's only a thousand positions available. You kind of go, oh, oh, I really want, you know, I'm happy to pay a little bit extra per box to ensure that I actually get a box. Um, but I'm also curious to see what else transpires because they've said that there'll be exclusive access to members only products and releases. Now what these products and releases will entail, who knows? And I think Select have really been trying to make it as fair as possible. You know, we saw with Brilliance, they had three different windows throughout the day um, at different times to allow um, as many people an opportunity. Of course, you do also get the uh, club logo album, which is pretty cool. Um, and you also get a select cap, which has sort of been a bit of a source of humor. Um, I think we've all got wardrobes full of promo caps that we never wear. They, they do refer to member-only merchandise. I don't know whether they'll have like a, a, a range of select t-shirts and drink bottles and, you know, key rings, stubby holders, um, what have you. Um, that doesn't really excite me. Um, but I am really fascinated to see what their members only products and releases will be. Who knows? It will be fascinating to watch. I'm comfortable and relaxed knowing now that I have a box of prestige waiting for me. I've got a box of series two waiting for me. I've got whatever premium stuff they come out with. That's all locked in. And of course, we'll be opening it on the channel. I'm curious to see how this goes. So thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Score Center. We will be back next Thursday as usual. Good luck in the footy tipping. I hope you're doing really well. And if you are doing super coach, I hope you're doing awesome in that as well. As always, keep your eyes peeled for lots more card opening videos coming up on the channel. And a quick thank you and acknowledgement that we've hit 400 subscribers, which is just mind boggling to me. Your viewership and support mean so much to me and I'm so happy so many people are enjoying my videos. So until next time, take care, stay cool. My name is Dave, this is Scorecard Collectibles, and I can't wait for you to join me next time.